Every day, all around the world, thousands of tennis players make a certain type of error that make winning matches really, really difficult, and they don't even realize it. Well, in this special lesson, I'm gonna reveal what that error is, and more importantly, give the solution so that you can have more success and win more matches in your own tennis play. And we're gonna be breaking down the match play and statistics and revealing what that error is between Tennis Troll, who's over on the other side in the orange, and Wannabe Pro here on the near side. We've been deconstructing their match play for the last few videos. It's been a ton of fun. Big thank you to both of them for putting themselves out there. Give them a thumbs up if you appreciate them posting their match play. Let's go ahead and dive right into the stats. So here's the stats breakdown for the entire match. They played two full sets plus a 10 point tiebreaker. They split sets and we're gonna be breaking it down between all three of those different kind of chunks of points. But here's all of the points. They played a total of 132. You see wannabe pro stats here, tennis troll stats here, and then the totals between each of these categories. And the categories we're gonna be talking about, and this is where today's topic really comes into play, is winners, unforced errors, and forced errors. Understanding the differences between each of these different types of points and how they end and why is critical to playing good tennis and winning more tennis matches. So let's break down and really define by using real life point examples what each of these are so that you can fully understand it and play your best. That first line is the most obvious one. We're hardly gonna spend any time on this because I think most people understand or know what this is, but it's important to define it. A winner is a shot that is hit that wins a point outright without it being touched. And so on the other side there, we had a, a passing shot here, a clean passing shot from Wannabe Pro. Tennis Troll comes forwards, approaches, Wannabe Pro hits a passing shot. It isn't touched, it's in play, it lands and bounce, it bounces twice before it's touched. That's a winner. Really simple, straightforward. It's just a clean winning shot. On the surface, unforced air seems to be really straightforward and obvious as well. And I, I chose a really obvious example just to kind of get the ball rolling, but then you'll see how things are not very obvious as we get a little bit more nuanced. So here we've got wannabe pro serving on the other side, tough serve, floater in the middle of the courts. He's obviously under no stress, no challenge at all. In fact, he just kind of stands and, and waits for the ball. And then when it comes down and he hits it, in the middle of the court, he just hits it into the net. So unforced air taken very literally is exactly what's happening here. There's no pressure being applied to wannabe pro. He messes up and it's just his fault. Tennis troll is not doing anything to force the mistake. He's not pressuring wannabe pro. Wannabe pro just messed up. And so this is kind of the most obvious example of an unforced air. Now things will start to get a little bit hazy and a little bit tricky. Watch this and, and let me know what you think here. This, I'll just go ahead and tell you, I, I believe this is an unforced error, but there's a little bit more detail to it, a little bit more nuance to it. This time, Tennis Troll hits a good serve, it's blocked back. He hits an attacking shot to the backhand of, of Wannabe Pro. But Wannabe Pro doesn't really have to move terribly far, maybe two or three steps and he's not being pulled super far away from the middle. It's not a terribly deep shot. It's landing a little bit past the, the service line, but nothing too crazy. And so from this position here, it looks like he's pretty comfortable and, and just ready for the, the shot. It ends up going off his frame. I don't know if he just kind of mistimed it or he didn't read the bounce very well, but to me, this is an unforced error, but you can tell there's a little bit more stress, a little bit more pressure he's not having to run all the way across the baseline, but there's a little bit of movement here. And also, Tennis Troll hit a confident shot. Like, he took a good cut at the ball, hit good topspin. It went past the service line. It was a relatively solid ball. So, you could make the argument that this was forced. I believe this was unforced, personally, but let me know what you think down below. Was this an unforced error or a forced error by Tennis Troll? So, Let's go move forwards and things will even get a little bit more complicated. And this is important. This is really important to understand because if you can't understand the differences and the, and the nuance between a forcing error and an unforced error, this is where players fall into traps and they believe that they're being beaten when they're actually beating themselves. So let's go ahead and move to the next example. Here's another quick example that is kind of on the fence, a little bit in the gray area. And I'm actually, honestly, I'm really curious to hear what everybody out there has to say about it. 
Here is again Wannabe Pro. He's going to hit a serve and then hit a backhand. And I want you to tell me, is this a forced error or an unforced error? He missed that backhand. This time he has to move further. After he hits his serve, he's got to move four or five steps. So there's more movement involved here. He's having to make a little bit more of an effort to get to the ball. But it's not, it's not like he's sprinting or reaching or stretching or anything like that. And for me, I'll go ahead and tell you what I think. I believe this is an unforced error because of something we talked about in the previous video. I made a comment about, is it an execution error or an, an intention mistake? And I believe this is a mistaken intention from the standpoint of Wannabe Pro here is just swinging for the fences and just trying to hit a big aggressive ball where it's not necessarily warranted. Does he have some open court to work with? Yeah. But does he need to go for this much? I mean, he like, kind of literally looks like a baseball player here going for the home run you know, shot, and he makes the mistake. And this is where judging, it becomes subjective. And this is why there's a lot of tennis analysts that are actually making a strong case for taking out the whole forced error and unforced error thing and just grouping it all into errors. If you touch the ball and you don't get it in, it's just an error because there's a lot of gray kind of discussion and debate about did somebody mess up because it's their fault or did he mess up because Tennis Troll hit a, hit a good shot? It's a little bit of a debate. So let me know in the comments down below what you think. And now we're going to shift gears and get into some more kind of obvious examples. If you're working hard to improve your game and you'd like my personal feedback and guidance, go sign up for a free account at EssentialTennisAcademy.com because twice per week I do live Q&A sessions where I break down videos coming from Academy students. So go sign up for a free account right now at EssentialTennisAcademy.com. If you're wondering where this is going, just hang in there for another second. It, this is so important and we're going to come back around to the stats again in a moment. I just had to be very clear about the terminology and the distinction between forced error and unforced error first. This is, to me, a very clear case of a forced error. Here we're going to see wannabe pro serving, then coming forwards on a short ball and approaching, and tennis troll hitting a really strong, solid shot down at the feet of wannabe pro. To me, this is a clear forced error. And what's important to realize here and kind of make the comparison, and I'll give you a little bit of uh, foreshadowing here. If you watch the video previous to this, where we showed a bunch of examples of Wannabe Pro going for the highlight shot and trying to hit an incredible winner, just think about that. Remember when Tennis Troll was up at the net and Wannabe is just trying to like smash the, the line in either direction? Here, Tennis Troll makes the decision to actually just aim for a big target right in the middle of the court. He actually targets his opponent. Now, he doesn't leave himself a ton of margin over the net, but he gives himself a big target and loops the ball, curves it down at the feet of Wannabe Pro, and just creates a tough shot. The ball's landing right at his feet. We all know that's a difficult ball. So because of the acceleration, because of the spin, because the ball is dropping aggressively down at the feet, to me, this is a very clear example of a forced error. Here's another clear example of a forced error. And we'll go ahead and play out the point here. The, the first five or six shots here are, are rally balls. The, these two gentlemen are just kind of trading neutral balls back and forth and kind of falling into an ad side pattern. And then right here, Tennis Troll comes forwards and attacks. And to me, this is a, just a, a very clear example of moving forwards, taking the ball earlier, taking the ball closer in when he realizes that this shot right here is coming in short. He starts moving forwards right away. He takes the ball high at the top of the bounce. He strikes it confidently with topspin and also drives it strongly as well. And the result of this shot pulls Wannabe Pro off the court into an obviously like a stressed position. Like he's having to run and hit at the same time. It's his backhand side. He's left the court in order, in order to track down the ball. We don't actually see his hitting position, but it's pretty obvious it's not a comfortable one or a position he wants to be in. And so he ends up making a mistake. Now, what I really want to point out here is where Tennis Troll's shot lands. His forcing shot here lands 
inside the service line. Now, part of this is because he moved inside the court and took the ball high. He took it early. And so he has kind of more of an angle to work with. But he hits a ball that lands right around the service line, angles off the court. And so how much risk is he really taking here? He's got this much space between the sideline and he's got this much space between the baseline. We can't even really see the baseline in this clip. He's got tons of margin here, stresses Wannabe Pro and pulls out the error from Wannabe Pro because of the attacking shot that he hits. And so he's able to create a point that gets put on his side of the balance sheet in his favor without taking very much risk. He did that by playing a smart point to set up that shot in the first place. He identified the opportunity that he had. Then he cashed in on that opportunity and hit a, an aggressive shot, but to a safe target that stressed his opponent. And so this is in stark contrast to how we, see, how we saw Wannabe Pro in the first and the second video in this series taking points, which was how can I come up with some kind of flashy highlight type of shot that gives me a point in return? If that breakdown and explanation about winners, unforced errors, forced errors has been really helpful, do me a favor and click the like button. I'm really curious to see what your thoughts are in the comments down below. And now let's go ahead and like actually give some feedback. And we're gonna break down the first set, second set tiebreaker. And I'm gonna kind of give some coaching notes to uh, Wannabe Pro and to Tennis Troll. So now that we kind of are all on the same page about what these different stats mean, let's look at the first set. And by the way, if you didn't see the previous two videos, what Wannabe Pro's game plan was from the beginning, before they even started playing the match, was I want to be really aggressive, hit a lot of down the line shots, aim for the lines in the first set and win the first set. Then in the second set, I'm going to totally mail it in was, was his phrase. He wanted to tank the second set because he's out of shape and he knew he couldn't keep up a high level of play for two full sets and then try to be competitive and kind of eke it out in the tiebreaker. That was his plan. And you're gonna see that reflected here in the, uh, in the stats. So here's set one. This was the most competitive play between the two of them. And that's really obvious looking at the points. They won the same number of points, but there's a key difference here that I want you to notice. When you look at the winners between Wannabe Pro and Tennis Troll, Wannabe Pro had almost double, well, I'm sorry, not almost, a little bit more than double the winners of Tennis Troll. On the other hand, if you look at forced errors, these are shots that Tennis Troll hit that forced Wannabe Pro to make a mistake. These are shots that Tennis Troll got to and touched, but Wannabe Pro forced Tennis Troll to make a mistake. Tennis Troll had almost double the forced errors that Wannabe Pro had. Isn't that interesting? So we've got a flip here, almost a, uh, actually a little more of, than a doubling of winners. And down here, it almost balances out perfectly. This to me is the biggest statistical kind of um, explanation or illustration for the difference in style between these two players. Wannabe Pro, very fixated on coming up with that winner highlight shot that he wants on his uh, highlight reel. Tennis Troll very much focused on setting up the point in his favor and then winning by forcing an error instead of being super concerned about whether or not it gets touched by Wannabe Pro. I'm not saying Wannabe Pro literally is saying, oh man, he touched it, like that was a bad shot. But if you watch part one and part two, you can see that he was like <laughs> very much gunning for that type of shot where it was just like an outright winner. Interestingly, Unforced errors, you would kind of expect that Wannabe Pro would make a lot more errors. But frankly, I think he, he played this role really well in the first set, to be totally honest. To hit almost as many winners as Unforced Errors is a really big accomplishment for somebody you know, not named Serena or Rafael. You know? like that's actually really, really impressive. So hats off to Wannabe Pro. And that, that's why I believe he won the first set. Um, Tennis Troll, on the other hand, really a much more smart and kind of calculated setup of points. And that's why he had almost double the, the four stairs. So this was kind of the battle of the first set. And the first set was the most competitive and most enjoyable to watch. 
when Wannabe Pro won that set, he did exactly what he said he planned on doing. In set number two, here's how the stats breakdown looks. Unforced errors, 18. But now, instead of almost matching with winners, he's got a th less than a third of his unforced errors and winners. And so clearly, he was still going for a lot. He was making a lot of mistakes, but it wasn't really playing out in his favor at all. Tons of unforced errors, very few winners, not very many forced errors either. And Tennis Troll here, you can see, is just kind of like, stay, like just kind of middle of the road. Like he, he doesn't have a whole lot of forced errors, not a whole lot of winners, not a whole lot of unforced errors either. He's kind of just playing his safe, you know, cross-court shots, and wannabe pro is just spraying the ball all over the place. And so this set was over very quickly, with only 13 points for wannabe pro and then 28 for, for Tennis Troll. And then we come to the tiebreaker, very close. This is one of those funny things where both players had opportunities to win the match. Uh, Wannabe Pro won a lot less total points, but he had match points in the tiebreaker. And when I look at the point play in this tiebreaker, both players were kind of uh, a little bit tentative. They were kind of pushy. Neither of them really wanted to step up. And so we see more unforced errors than any other stat here. Those forced errors went away from Tennis Troll. He got kind of tentative, and I don't blame him because the previous set was basically just given to him on a silver platter by Wannabe Pro. And so coming back and playing more head-to-head, -head, like um, kind of more first strike type of tennis and trying to establish control of the rallies is tough after your opponent just pulled like a switcheroo and totally tanked the, the second set. So difficult in the tiebreaker to come back. Anyway, Tennis Troll ultimately ends up winning the breaker. Here's my kind of conclusion or final thoughts for both of these players. Wannabe Pro, you play some really smart patterns and tactics, which we went over in the previous videos. I think if you had more of an emphasis on forcing errors instead of highlight shots, like your weapons are great. Like, keep trying to infli uh, inflict damage on your opponents, but being so fixated on the highlight shots, I think is making it much tougher for you to win. And that's my, my message to everybody watching. This is a huge lesson to be learned for so many tennis players. It's one I need to continue reminding myself of when I play tennis for sure. Tennis troll, keep the racket head speed up. You got lulled into being kind of tentative in the tiebreaker because of the rope-a-dope you know, kind of scenario where the first set was super competitive, second set not really at all, and then you had to try to kind of find your way and fight, in, fight your way through the, the tiebreaker, which is tough. But uh, if you can keep your racket head speed up, get the shape back into your shots in the tiebreaker and put that consistent pressure on wannabe pro in the tiebreaker, I think you probably win the tiebreaker pretty easily. So. That's my, that's my thoughts for both players. I had a lot of fun breaking down. It took me a lot of time, by the way, doing all the stats and, and uh, making the charts and stuff like that. If, you, if you've enjoyed this series, please do me a favor and click the like button. Thank you so much for your support. I'm looking forward to seeing your thoughts about forced errors versus unforced errors in the comments down below. If you missed mar uh, parts one and part two, I'll put a link to them in the first comment in the uh, comments section down below. So with that, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support so much, and I'll catch you in the next video.